Hello and welcome to training on the Vision application for insurance companies and third-party advisors or TPAs. Vision replaces the integrated securities information system. Vision is a web-based application that complies with the policies and procedures of the NEIC SVO office. The features that we will cover today include searching for a security by either the QSIP name, number, or issuer name. We'll be looking at the dashboard and see how it summarizes securities of interest to you into easy-to-use groupings to help you quickly identify their status. You'll see a pre-population of filing data that's retained in the system from the vendor feeds. You'll see available action buttons to initiate filings and real-time status of your filings and when the filing is approved and completed. You'll see an estimated billing cost upon filing submission and you'll be able to view filing details after the filing has been submitted and receive alerts from the analyst. Vision performs, performs optimally under Microsoft Internet Explorer versions 8 through 11 and under major versions of Firefox. For optimal system viewing, it is recommended that your screen resolution be set to 1920 by 1080. It is important to note that you will not need to, re to load any software onto your PC to use Vision. Although you will need a user ID and password to the system, which can be attained by completing the new user account form located on the SVO page of the NEIC website. So let's get started by logging into the Vision application. All right, now let's begin by logging into the application with our test user ID and password. It's important to note your password will not show on the screen and both your ID and password is case sensitive. So the first thing you will see when logging in is the user agreement. It's important to read through this agreement at least once so you can be aware of what you're agreeing to. But going forward, there's no, no need. Um, you can just accept and be able to move into the application. If you do decline, it will send you back to the NEIC website. So we'll go ahead and accept just to move forward. So we will go over some of the general navigation of the application. Um, at the top of the screen, you have a collapsible header. So that you can reduce that and create more space on the page. You also have your help menu in the upper right hand corner. This will give you the information to contact the, the vision admins as well as the user's guide which will help you walk through all portions of the application which we'll be refer referring to this later in the as we go out the demonstration. One other thing to note is under our user profile, so if we select on our ID up top You'll see you'll be able to um, select my profile and be able to update some contact information. If you do need to update your email, you can update it here, but it's also important to let us know that you're doing that just because there are other applications that may use your email address. We'd want to make sure that those are all correct. So now let's go back into the application. Some general navigation for the application is that you do want to use the tabs that are in the blue bars to access different pages within the application rather than using the back buttons in your browser. So let's go over um, and look at the, you've got the gray box at the top. This is the bulletin board. So this will give you a message from the SVO admin if there's important information related to the application. If there is not a bulletin posting currently active, you will not even see this gray bar. So we're going to look at the message center. This is the home page that you will see when you first log into the application. This is where you're going to see messages from the SVO analysts on your filings. So you will receive messages for inforecs that have been submitted for securities that are that you have filed or they are just securities that are included on any of your dashboards. You will also see alerts from analysts if they are sending you a note about something specific on your filing or when your security or when your filing has been completed, you will see it as disposed. You can sort any of this information on the screen using the up or down arrows next to the headings. Or you can also use the filter box below the headings to be able to type specific information to be able to access that particular message. You'll also notice at the bottom of the screen you do have pagination. So as additional filing or additional messages are submitted um, to you, you will be able to paginate them here at the bottom of the screen. If there are filings or I'm sorry, messages that you no longer want to receive, you can just mark them on the left side by using select all or selecting individual boxes to mark them as read, 
Mark them as unread to be able to follow up later, or just delete them all together so that they will not show on your message center. It's important to note if you're deleting a message, it's only deleting that message. It's not deleting an actual info rec or the note that may be on the filing. So now let's look at your dashboard by selecting the dashboard button. So when you first start using Vision, you will see a blank screen and you need to load securities to that dashboard. So there's multiple ways to add securities to your dashboard so that you can see the work that needs to be completed. You can do that by adding a, uploading a securities in a file or you can use the right hand side to search for a QSIP number, an issuer number, or an issuer name. So we're going to look at searching by an issuer name first and seeing how we add securities to our dashboard. So as we type at least three characters, we'll be able to see uh, the system populate with potential options of issuer names. As we type additional information, you can see it dynamically change. So we'll select one and click search. And now it will show us all the securities that are related to our related to this issuer. So if we want to add them to our dashboard, we can select the Select All button on the left-hand side, or we can simply toggle it off and select Individual Securities. It's important to note you also have filter options under QSIP number and also sorting options under QSIP and issuer description. So after we've selected the securities we want, we'll click just Add to Dashboard. Now we can also search in the search box with QSIP number or issuer number. So we'll enter in that detail and click search. And we can see over here on the right hand side we can either go ahead and click this security to add to dashboard or we can click on the issuer name which is in blue to see additional securities for that issuer and select them. Um, we can particularly select the individual QSIP number to go in and then add them to the dashboard. Now we're going to show you how to upload a dashboard of securities within a text file. So we'll go back to dashboard. And there is a little icon to the right of default dashboard. This is how you manage all the securities on your dashboard. So we can upload a list of securities to the dashboard. So we'll start off with that. We're going to click Add Issues. And we'll choose a file to upload to our existing dashboard. So we can just navigate to where we have the, that particular file located on our, our desktop. And click Upload. And you'll see the status bar indicating that it's being processed. And also give you a message of how many securities you've added to your dashboard. And we can see it also the, the populated up here with the number of securities on the dashboard. Now if we have multiple companies that we're doing business for and we want to add separate dashboards for each of those companies, specifically as like a TPA, we would click Manage Dashboard. And we're going to create a new folder. And here you can type in anything you want for that particular dashboard name. It can be names. It, it, can, it can be letters, it can be numbers, and any coordination that you would like. So we click Choose to create that and add our file associated to it and upload. So as that's processing, you can see in the background um, that new dashboard is now on is the, the dashboard we're looking at. So if we go back to Manage Dashboard, we can toggle between the dashboards. So you can see the different options for ones you want to select. Now how you remove securities from your dashboard with the bulk option is by using the replace. So if we go back to manage dashboards and we click replace, we would be replacing a whole new file on our dashboard of securities. So whatever was on the dashboard before um, will be replaced with whatever file we upload. Now if we wanted to upload one single file and upload all and update all the securities on our all the dashboards. We would use the bulk up upload, 
and we would submit one file. Now there are specific options for how you need to set the criteria for your file, and that's located in the help documents. So then you also have the option to delete your dashboard. So if you're no longer using that dashboard, you can simply delete it. If you need to download the securities that are on that dashboard, you can click Download QCIPs and be able to download the information into an Excel file. It's important to note that when you're uploading a, a dashboard, it must be a text file and it can support up to 340 kilobytes, which is generally around 25,000 securities. So now that we've added a dashboard, we'll look over the different options that we have on, on your dashboard. So you can see on the left hand side, you've got filter, a filter box in blue where based on the type of security or particular filing it is, you would see if you clicked on one of these options, say in Vosh, your dashboard reduces down to only the securities that applied to that specific option. You can select another option and you see your dashboard change to only the securities related to that. And if you want to get everything back in your dashboard that you had before, you just click securities in your dashboard at the top and it will bring everything back. Now if you're no longer needing to use that filter and want to reduce it so you can maximize the space, you can simply click the hide filters button on the left side and if you want to see it again, we'll just click show filters. All right, and there's another way of grouping information on your dashboard. Under the groupings column, which is the first one there, if we select one of these options, we will see only the filings that have an info request, or maybe one that has material change, or pricing, renumber, pricing request, or renumbering request. We would only see those options. This is just a quick way for you to access the information that you need to respond to. It's important to note um, those icons that you saw to the left after we displayed them. If you hover over any of these icons, unless we'll get to one here, so maybe we just go back to the filters and select one. These icons over here, if you hover over them, it tells you what they represent. And the material change is represented by the tool. And the information about these icons are also located in the user's guide under the help menu. You also have available actions to complete um, on these securities to the right hand side. So we'll hide our filters to maximize our space. You can see under the available actions, you have buttons to tell you if it's available for initiate initial filing or initiate an annual filing. If one of those is applicable, you would see that button there. On your headings at the top, you also have the same sort buttons or same filter up, filter, I'm sorry, sort up and down so that you can quickly locate a security you're looking for. You also have the pagination at the bottom of the screen to get to the additional securities that are on your dashboard. So now we're going to look at submitting a filing using our filing wizard. So we're going to initiate a filing. It's important to note that VOS filings can be initiated from your dashboard or the issue detail page. So we'll locate the security we'd like to do a filing or we could have just simply selected um, one of the buttons to the right. So here is the issue detail. Here that gives you specific information that the system is retaining about this security. So we can initiate a filing or also want to point out that if you no longer want to keep track of this, this is another way of remo removing a security from your dashboard individually rather than uploading a complete file um, from the manage dashboard functions. So we'll go ahead and initiate a filing from here. And this takes you into our filing wizard which will walk you through the process to complete your filing. As you can see we've got steps across the top of the screen that tells you what needs to be done to be able to submit your filing as well as a status bar to let you know how much has been completed. You also have the, the back and next button to be able to move forward in the filing or the cancel button in the right hand side to just to be able to cancel the work that you're doing. So the first step to do to complete a filing is select the company we're doing the filing for. It's important to note that this is the company that you are, that will receive the bill. So if you are a third party analyst, you will see all of your clients directly on the screen. 
so that you can select the company that you are doing um, the filing for and that they will receive the bill. Um, it's important to note billing is set up by the, the vision admins. So if there are particulars as far as who's getting the bill within the company, you would coordinate that with them when you were completing your setup. So we'll go ahead and click Next to move on to the next screen. And we'll see that status bar move across the screen. And then since this is a security that the SVO has not seen before, we need to tell them the category of the security, security type, and security subtype. If it was a security that the, the vision application already knew about, a lot of this information would already be populated. And so after we've selected all the information, we'll click Next. And you'll see on the right-hand side under the Filing Information box, the information we selected on the previous page is now updated here. So based on the information that we type or that we associate to the security, we'll generate different questions um, for us to answer. So as we complete that, um, for this particular security, we'll also need to select the industry code to assign the analyst. So as you type at least three characters in this field, it will automatically populate with options um, so that you can select the specific SAC code. And so we'll answer our questions down below. And then we'll click Next to go to the next page. So on here is our summary of information. This is your last opportunity to hit the back button, go back and change anything that you've previously entered before moving forward. Now you still can cancel the filing um, be beyond going on this page um, before you submit it. And we'll show you that here. So we'll go ahead and prepare our filing. We'll say everything's correct. In the upper right hand corner, you've got your cancel button. That, that would be how you would cancel if you needed to update something once you've gotten to this page, but you would need to start your filing all over again. So we'll go through the information that we see on this page. In the center of the page, you have the general section. This is the area where you had entered in information um, into the filing. On the left-hand side, you've got the QSIP information. This is what we already know about the filing. And below that is specific filing information. So down at the bottom, you have your estimated filing costs. You'll see who is getting the bill and see the information of what you had updated for the type of security it is. And you'll also see, um, right now it says analyst as unassigned. Once we complete the filing, you will, you will see, and you go back into that filing, you'll be able to see the specific analyst that's been assigned to your filing. And directly above that, you see the status of your filing. Right now it's pending submission. There are various stages of a filing, which you can see all of those in the user's guide. Under, under the general section, you have, you have the supporting documents and you see the red asterisk that is located next to the documents. If you see the red asterisk, these are all required documents that need to be submitted before you can submit your, submit your filing. So to be able to update the system with those documents, we'll simply click Edit and go into Attachments. So here is where we would upload each individual document associated to the specific filing. So we will click Choose and go in and select that and Upload. Now you can see the name of the file that we uploaded under the details. And we'll do that for each of the, each of the documents. Now another way to um, upload information is by the Add Bypass Reason. So if you select this, it will bypass the option to attach a document, but you can type information in, in this field. And you can see whatever we type, whatever we type, will also show under the details. Under the details. We'll select the files, files that we need for all of us and upload those. upload those. And we have one last document that we'll attach. Now if you have a document that, that is not a required field on, on this page that you would like to upload, there is the Add button under Supporting Documents at the bottom of the page. You can simply click Add. Select a type of document that you would like to upload. And then you would have to attach the document. Now this is an SCA one, so it wouldn't necessarily apply to this, but we just happened to pick that one. So you would go into Attachments and um, Upload or Bypass. So we need to at least upload or, or bypass something. So. 
bypass. And we'll just put, you know, completed an error or test or and we'll insert our reason. And then click save. Now the analyst will be able to remove that document um, so that it will not stay within the filing. So if we have everything on the page that we'd like um, that needs to be submitted with the file link, we can click Submit. But before we do that, I want to show you the Notes section in the upper right-hand side. That Notes section is where you will send a note to the analyst. So anything you type in here will be seen by the analyst, and it will send them a message showing that they have a, a message that they need to go out and review. Now it's important to note that only you and the analyst will be able to see these notes. And then when the analyst responds back to you, um, it will, you will receive alert in your message center showing that a message has been added to this particular filing so that you can go back and see what the analyst had said. So now you can see that um, we now have a filing number and your status on your filing is now pending submission. So we'll click Submit. And now that takes us to our My Securities filings. So these are all the filings that I have submitted. So you will only see the filings that you have submitted. Um, on this page, you also have the, the sort with the up and down arrows to be able to find specific filings or QSUB numbers or any, any criteria that you're looking for to be able to review a filing. You also have the filter option, so if you want to type in the information you know. Anytime you see that the blue um, text, those are links directly back into that particular filing or QSIP. If we click on the QSIP number, that's going to take us to the issue detail. And so we can also see our filing information below on this, on this particular security. So we'll go back to My Securities Filings. And we'll click on the filing number of the one we just completed. So now if you go down and look under Analyst on the left-hand side, you can see that the system has already assigned it to an analyst. So that if you need to communicate, you would also know who it is that you'd be communicating with. All right, so we'll go back. It's also important to note, you know, that you'll see on the My Securities filing page, the different statuses of your filings. So as you, you can see that ones that have been reviewed and completed and submitted, um, you can see the status of this information here. So let's go back into the filing one more time. There's one thing I, I forgot to let you know, the end of the filing. We can go ahead and select the filing number down below. So another option of going into it. Um, the export filing information in the upper right hand corner. If we select that, that will give us the information about the filing in a PDF file that we can print off and attach to any document that we need um, to be able to track within our own individual companies. So we'll select that. There we go. And it pops up. Um, you know, it's important to note that the statuses will change on this anytime a status changes to your filing, you would need to go back in and reprint it again. And information that's currently not filled in, like received date and completed date, would show with um, actual date and times once those, those processes have been completed. So once your filing has been submitted, you can, or you can print this off, go back after it's been completed, and, and see the, the dates and information there. So now we'll go back and we'll show you how to respond to an information request. So an information request are, is information that the analysts need to be able to complete your filing. So maybe you accidentally uploaded the wrong document type, um, and the analyst is going to request that or request additional information. So we can see a filing that has an information request on our message center. So we can select that to go directly into that filing. And we can see this is a filing that's already Sorry, we'll find another one. That's one that we've already worked before. So we'll go into our dashboard, and we will find a filing that has an information request still accessible. We'll sort by that and find that. And we'll go ahead and select that QSIP number to be able to. And then we can see the filing number down below. All right, so looking here, we can see in the green circle in the lower bottom in the status, it tells us that 
All right, we have an InfraRack, and it's awaiting file or input. As we hover over it, we can see it populate to tell us how many days remaining to respond to this InfraRack. In the green circle, it tells you how old the InfraRack actually is. So it's been issued 15 days ago. It's important to note um, there are 45 days to respond to an InfraRack. So to, to bring it to your attention that an InfraRack needs to be responded to, three days prior to the InfraRack being expired, that green circle will turn to yellow. Once it turns to red, that um, is past its 45 days, so you will not be able to respond to the InfraRack at that point. And you would need to send a note to the analyst and request um, that InfraRack to be extended. You can also see this information about the InfraRack when we actually go into the filing. So we'll select the filing number. And you can see on the left-hand side, under the filing information under statuses, it says 15 days and awaiting filer input. So with the, the filing, is we need to respond to this. And we can see the documents that they're wanting by the red flag under the supporting documents. So we can see that we need to respond to this. So to respond to it, we'll click Edit. And we'll click Add Attachments, just like we did to upload documents initially. Um, we would choose to submit a new document, or we could bypass um, with the reason. So we'll select a document and upload that, and upload. So now you can see the details. Now, if you were not the original filer on this filing, you would not see the names of the documents um, initially when you came into it. All right, now you can see that we've since we've saved our InfoRec, that red flag has now turned to black, so we know it's been responded to. And the status is changed to pending analyst feedback. So now let's look how to complete an annual filing. It is very similar to completing an initial. So we'll go back to our dashboard. And we'll hide our filters so that we can see our available actions on the left side. So you can either initiate an annual filing from the, directly from the button. So we'll go ahead and select that so you can see that takes you directly into the wizard to where you have the options like you did with the initial. But we're going to cancel that and we're going to go back and I want to show you another way. So when we cancel, this will take us back to our dashboard. So if we click directly on the QCIP number, this will take us into the issue detail. You can see across the top, you have the annual update, material change, pricing request, and renumbering request. This is the only place that you can do filings for pricing, material change, or renumbering. Um, you have to go into the QSIP and select the button here. But you also have the button for the annual update. So you can process the annual update here or directly from the button on the dashboard. So we'll go ahead and select annual update and move forward to and it takes us into the filing wizard that we saw previously. Again, we have to select the company that's going to receive the bill. This is a particular security that's been filed before. So it's an annual update, so we already know the issue type and subtype. So there's nothing for us to be able to update on this. We do have to enter the required fills, which also show with the red asterisk with the date acquired. Um, the financial analyst name, this is voluntary. It's, it's not a required field if you want to share it. You can um, update any, any of the questions down below, but notice the industry code is not editable. So that one will retain as is, but if you need to change any of the answers down below, because maybe the person that filed the initial is not the same company that you are, so there's specific information related to you. So we'll go ahead and click Next. And, oh, oh we, did, we missed a slash in our, our date, so we'll get that corrected. So this is a good point to point out. If you make an error, the system's going to tell you what you need to, need to do. So we'll correct that, and we'll try to submit again. All right, this is your um, prepare screen. So this is the, the final summary of the information for the filing. If you need to go back and correct anything, do the back button again like on the other. But we'll move forward and click prepare. And just like with the initial filing, it's going to look very similar. You've got the same general section, the QSIP section, filing information. You can see the, the filing status. You can see the price, um, estimated price down below, as well as the company that's going to be getting the filing. 
and you have the uh, required documents. So you you need to respond to those required documents by clicking Edit and Attachment for each of the individual files that it's requesting to either upload them or bypass with a reason. So as we're doing this, it's, it's important to note that if you're doing a bunch of um, filings for the same issuer and there may be requesting the same type of documents, um, you wouldn't necessarily want to upload them all um, for every filing type. But if it is a filing that, or if you're filing for an issuer and we already have the documentation associated to um, that particular dis file type, rather than having to upload the document, it will see approved on file. So you'll, you won't have to upload a document if we already have it on file. So we'll go ahead and click Submit, and we'll see that this is how you complete an annual filing. And again, it always takes you back to your, um, your My Securities filing so that you can see all the filings that you have completed. So now we're going to show you how to create an SCA filing, which an SCA is a subsidiary controlled and affiliated filing. And it looks very similar to start as far as completing the filing. Um, to submit a filing, you click on SCA Filings. And on the right-hand side, in the top, you can see Initiate Sub 1. And it looks very similar. You go through the wizard. You pick your billing company. You add the security that you're going to be doing the SCA for. And we'll click Find to apply it. Um, or respond to the applicable questions that will dynamically populate it on the screen based on the information that we input. And click Next. Pick our SCA type. Note over on the right hand side the filing information populates there just like it did on the VOS filings of the information we typed on the previous screen. So after everything has been responded to, got one more question for the Goodwill. And then we'll click Next to go to the next page. And again, based on the information that we've selected, we may have more or less questions. So again, we have the required fields that must be responded to that show with the red asterisk. And anything without that red asterisk is not required. And none of these are required fields. So we can go ahead and click Next. And this is the same summary, similar to what you saw in the VOS. So if everything is correct, we'll go ahead and prepare SCA filing. And on here, you can see different documents. Um, only one of them is required, though. So the one with the red is the, is the only one that we are required to submit. We can certainly upload documents for all the other types, but we do it the very same way, add attachments, and pick the document that is applicable to that filing. And notice you also have the same add screen that you had under boss filing, so we needed to add additional file or additional documents. You've got the same information on the left side for, for the information we know about that SCA, as well as the filing information with um, um, the status, who the assigned field, or I'm sorry, the analyst field is also the pricing for the estimated costs and the inter insurance entity getting the bill. So if everything's correct, we can click Submit. Of course, you had the, the Cancel and the Notes section, just like you had before. So I want to point out on this screen here, these are all the filings you know, that I have submitted under this ID. So this is similar to my securities filings for the VOS filing. You can see all your filings, your QCIP, um, information about this 
the filing and the security. You have the same filter and sort functions at the top of the column headings, just like you did under My Security Filings. And if we go back into the uh, filing, so we're going to go back in and show you you've got the same um, export information. So we'll go ahead and just click any one of those filings. You've got the same export state information that will export to a PDF file. Right. So you can see all that same information here. And then um, this is also where you initiate a sub-2 filing. So if, if you need to do an annual on uh, SCA, you would click on the filing or security, or I'm sorry, the filing, and then go into initiate sub-2. So you've got that button in the right-hand corner right next to export. So if we select that, you can see it takes us into the same filing wizard to, that we did before. Um, we won't necessarily complete um, this particular one. But it's the exact same way that you can make, complete an annual, a sub-1, um, initiate initial on the VOS filings. It uses the very same filing wizard. So now on the My Counterparties Filing tab, this is where we initiate an initial filing. So we've got the button on the right-hand side that we can initiate an initial. Same filing wizard where we have to select the company we're doing the billing for or filing for, we enter the information for the counterparty. We pick the location. Again, it's um, we need to complete all the fields that have the red asterisk. Guarantor is not a required field. So we'll click Next and see our summary. And if everything's correct, we'll prepare. And here it looks very similar to the SCA and the VOS filings. You've got the same filing information and general information for what we've input. And there's supporting documentation that is required and one that's not required. So you respond the same way. Um, we'll respond to the, the ones that are read, that are required. And we can ignore the one that was not required. We'll bypass this particular one, insert a reason, and save. Save this field. It's important you've got to save it first. And you notice the one that we, we did not respond to that was not required is no, long, no longer displayed. So now we're ready to submit our filing. And that takes us back to my current party filing. So these are all the filings you know, that, that I've submitted. So you can see you've got the same sort and filter options at, at the tops of these screens, as well as the um, link directly into the filing on the left-hand page. So let's go look at the My Counterparties page. That's one last thing I want to show you there. So here are the filings, additional information that you've submitted as well. You can see over on the right-hand side, you've got available actions. So you can see when counterparties you previously filed under My Counterparties are ready for an annual. Um, you can see that in button on the right-hand side for available actions. We'll go ahead and select that. We won't necessarily completely go through it, but just want to show you clicking that will look very much like all the other filing types. So we'll select on that and, and answer the questions, and that's how you submit an annual on My Counterparties. So now we'll go back. This completes our demonstration for the applic vision application. I um, just want to provide you with our contact information here at the, at the end of, of the screen so that you can see who to contact. If you'd like to have access to Vision, just email us at this address or contact us by calling, and we'll, we'll get you um, to the area on the SVO webpage where there's the document to be able to submit to be able to get your user ID and password to access the system. And we thank you, and we look forward to working with you.